Hey guys, and welcome to Leap of Fate. Uh, this is going to be, what, number... I've lost track now of uh, my attempt to clear backlog of review codes. So, full disclosure, looking at this game with a review code, uh, didn't pay for it. Um, so, same shtick of every video. Anyway, uh, what is Leap of Fate? Leap of Fate is a game that came out back in July... I think it was the end of July, like July 31st of uh, 2015. So, almost a year old. Um, and it's an isometric action game, kind of a roguelike in the way that Hand of Fate is. Um, and it's... Outside of just the title being two-thirds the same, um, there's a lot of similarities that Leap of Fate draws to Hand of Fate. So if you've ever played Hand of Fate, uh, things should look very familiar to you, at least in the meta part, outside of the base-like isometric action bit. That's more similar to um, a lot of twin-stick shooters. Um, You've got four characters here. Uh, you start with only Aeon when you first boot the game up, and then you have to unlock them sequentially by playing with the previous one a little bit. So I went ahead and I've unlocked all the characters and played around with them all a bit. Uh, we'll start with Aeon here just because it's the default one. Uh, so the way it works is similar to, say, Rogue Legacy, where you, when you lose, you would unlock permanent upgrades so that future runs would be easier. They've got a similar thing here. so. As you go through the game, you have little missions you have to accomplish, and as you accomplish enough of them, you unlock upgrades along this wheel. So you see here I've unlocked, I've done three missions, so I've unlocked uh, Haunting Wind is a permanent upgrade for Eon, so his Shadow Walk damages enemies when you go through them. Uh, his basic attacks do more damage, and I unlocked Big Mo, and then I moved on to Big Mo, and I have not done the others. So we'll unlock our next a bit upgrade here, which is Shadow Bind, when we clear two more missions. Uh, so here's a brief description of Aeon. Every character has a Shadow Walk ability and a, gl a default glyph, which are kind of like secondary attacks. You've got a basic attack, the glyph, which is your secondary attack, and you've got a Shadow Walk, which is kind of like a dodge roll in, say, um, Gungeon. It's a very critical move. I You only have a certain amount of uses of it per like room which ends up working out kind of interestingly um also like in say isaac you have different characters start with different amounts of resources uh eon starts with five health two keys and one i want to call it a battery i think it's called a charge uh there are outfits once you've done i think up to here once you've done all but the last mission you unlock a character's extra outfits you can change what they look like and they've got little story bits. Um, I'm going to show off Eon's backstory and then I'll just briefly describe the other three characters because this cinematic can be kind of long and I just want to make sure I show off the, the kind of art style that uh, the game uses here. So. As long as I can remember, I've had issues with family. My mom got committed to an institution when I was four. And my dad, who knows. So my grandparents took me in. The whole thing was a shock to them and they sought refuge in esotericism. They became bitter and distant. At 19, I got accepted at NYU in physics. So I left Montreal as fast as I could and never looked back. I loved sciences, but then I came upon this collection of arcane scriptures at the library. These texts went much deeper than those on my grandparents' bookshelf. I became obsessed, came back day after day. That's when they made contact. The cabal didn't need a silver tongue to convince. They just showed me. Magic. The stuff of legend. It was real. Soon after, I received my initiate's name, Eon. I was now part of an arcane society. A dream come true, right? Not quite. 
Cabal's edicts are strict and dehumanizing. Ascension only occurs as magic replaces the mind, or so they say. I, Gabriel Oxy, started fading away. After seven years of deprivation and absolute submission, it's a miracle I could still think. One fateful day, I found the last bit of resolve left in me, and I ran for my life. All right, so there we go. That's uh, Eon's story. I don't know if Clever Plays, who are the uh, developers, if they're based in Montreal or not, and if that's like one of the devs that did the voiceover. He sounds kind of like a Montreal Irish. Anyway, um, you see down here at the bottom right, there's a difficulty select. I cannot change it because I have not unlocked hard because I have to complete 15 more missions. So we're going to just have to do normal. And we'll get into Hand of Fate here. So here we go, we have our two missions. We have to make 12 special kills, and when we get to level two, there's they want us to kill five snakes. So, like I said, it's kind of a twin stick shooter. You see me moving the reticle around with the right analog stick. So let's get into level one, and you'll see where the comparisons to Hand of Fate get drawn pretty quickly here. So that's our deck of fate. It gets shuffled up and dealt out semi-randomly, I imagine. And we get to pick a card and then progress through it. So if I use the right trigger, I make this basic attack, which for Eon is just a wave of five, um, I think they're daggers or something, uh, in a line. And it's, it's a very rapid fire attack. Uh, while I'm here in the map, I will show you that the shadow walk is, I think, left bumper, and it goes in the direction that you are aiming, which is kind of weird when you're backing. Normally, I, I try to fight like this, where I'm backing away from enemies and shooting at them, so then when I try and dodge, I end up dodging into them, which, once you've unlocked upgrades that make your dodge more offensive, it's good, but initially, it's kind of the opposite of how you want to be dodging, uh, so I try and get in the habit of snapping back and forth before I dodge, but it's tough. Um, and then his special attack is back to left bumper, yeah. And when you aim, your reddit, you can hold it to, to like precision your aim, but usually you'd just be shooting like this and then you would tap a shot off like that. All right, let's teleport. And now you see we've unlocked that, so now we have options here. We can go down the upgrade, and then that'll upgrade. That'll unlock these two, or we can go to the mystery. We have two keys, so we definitely want to open the mystery up. And we get a new card for the deck of fate. It is choose a card to skip over. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Uh, as far as upgrades, you see there are, let me go back for a second, there are three different upgrade trees, and whenever you get the opportune upgrade, it decides which tree you get to upgrade, so right now we can only upgrade attack skills. A really cool thing about Leap of Fate is all the skill trees are, at least semi, randomly generated, so the skill trees aren't always the same, so you don't always have the same path you can go down. So right now we can pick between Taser, where each basic attack has a hit or each basic attack hit has a probability of stun, which is pretty good. Or we can grab Quick Temper, which deals a magical punch to creatures that hit us in melee. And you see they don't always kind of branch out based off of that one. I'm going to go with Taser here. Just because I'm more likely to use the basic attack. And we'll visit our shop as well. Uh, when you see, you see this... Uh, I am over there the purple the purple 23 that is our mana you get mana from the chest when you complete levels and from doing special kills which means you have to use your glyph or your shadow walk to kill people your glyph and shadow walk have a certain number of charges you can see on the left and right i have four charges at each so you own those refill per maps so you only get to 
do shadow daggers four times and then you would start using your charges which are the blue lightning bolts up there or you can shadow walk four times a map and then you're out but you want to be doing that to get the mana so you can buy things so right now i can't buy anything i could be like purchasing an upgrade card or uh buying destiny runes if i had mana but i don't have any so we'll get some from combat and then we'll come back uh, let's see, what's our challenge? To succeed, generate the specified amount of mana. So there we go, this is an excellent challenge to do since I need to get mana anyway. So we need to get 74 mana. So I think I missed there. You can get mana for blowing people up with the uh, cars, that is a special kill. I'm gonna try and weaken them here. Oops. Okay, now I'm out of the dagger, so you see my, my charges has changed to the lightning bolt. So if I want to shoot again, I can, but it's going to use my lightning bolt. Let's get those guys killed. And then this level is a multi-wave level if you look up in the top right there. Oh, I did use my battery charge, damn it. Uh, you can see that it does have one of two so you have multiple waves on harder maps I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get enough mana from special kills this time no I didn't so I didn't get my extra HP reward probably because I didn't use that car I should use that car but I did get some mana so we're at 75 now and you see that there are these skulls on the combat cards denote how many waves there are in combat. So you've got uh, one wave of combat, two waves of combat, three waves of combat, but the chest you can also notice gets bigger and bigger. So the rewards get better and better the more combat you do. We're going to pop into the shop real quick. We're going to grab our destiny runes and teleport back and we'll drop those runes. And these have all sorts of crazy effects. Here we got a card. Uh, in each level, there's a glyph you can get. I'll explain that when I find it. For now, we got a mystery card. We'll open it up and grab a free chest, which is going to have some more mana, a bolt, and whatever these like Illuminati Triforce things are. Oops. You can push Y to change glyphs. You can get more than one glyph. Um, I tend to just stick with the default glyph. I don't really, I haven't really tried other glyphs. Uh, I will come back here. I'm going to grab the upgrade card as well. And now if we go back, we have an upgrade card we can grab. Oops. There we go. We don't have enough mana. We can pick either an attack or mobility skill for this upgrade card. But we need 160 to get the alpha PCU. Which is kind of cool. Or... Oops, I wanted to see how much we needed for the mobility skills there. Um, we need a 160 for Alchemist Mark. Oh, that seems really good. Um, and Time Walk 290. I definitely want the Alchemist Mark, so we need 160. I'm do this combat here and try and generate some more mana. Got some, but I got tagged there. Oops, just trying to kill that guy. There we go. Oops, come on. Okay, this is just embarrassing at this point. There we go. And we completed our mission, which I forget what our missions were, but I did it. I think it was probably generating mana. Uh, and there was, yeah, I got the chest, okay, so we can teleport away. We have 190, we can go back. Not in the shop, it was not there. It was here we wanted to go, and we wanted to upgrade our mobility and grit alchemist mark, which seems real good. And we will grab the two headed combat card. So we're going to shadow walk through guys here, so that our basic attacks generate some mana. Kill that one. I'm taking a lot of dumb damage here. There we go. Try 
try and play a little more carefully, try and lure these guys to this car. Did not realize I had like no energy left. Let's open our chest, get our mana for the level. Uh, the Illuminati coins, as I come to call them, I think. Oh, there was an exploded car there. You can use them to respawn. Uh, if you die, you can you can use them as continues. You can also use them to purchase things in shops sometimes. Um, I don't think I've ever really spent them outside of that. Like, sometimes in shops, I'll go in and buy, like, HP upgrades with them. But this is our boss, the Guardian. So you end up in a similar kind of flow. I think you've, you've kind of gathered how it goes. You just, you work your way down, you kind of try and find the Guardian, and then you try and do everything else you can to get upgrades and resources around it. And then you go fight the Guardian when you're done. And when you finish the level, you get um, a free upgrade from a list of three available ones. So we're going to continue. Oh, Glitchy Glyph. Your glyph produces random effects each activation. That's pretty cool. So we get a mystery card if we take it, or we could pay to not have that be a problem. So we get like a random glyph every time we shoot it. That's kind of cool. That's like really cool. I kind of, I hope that's like an actual thing you can get. Okay. Pull that up. I don't know what this is. Oh, looks like I used it well, I suppose. Get a new card for deck of fate and we need a key for this chest, so we're going to have to go back to the shop and purchase those keys after all. But first, let's see what our mystery card is. Ah, well, we need a key for that, too. It's all the better reason to come back here. Purchase a key. There's two keys. One for our mystery card. Which is just another room with a chest in it. I'm really glad there was help in that chest, actually. And we need to open this chest. They do leave little icons on the cards so that if you leave and come back, you can kind of remember that you needed the stuff out of there. And now we got the... What was it? The glyph, I think? No, glyphs are the, the weapons. Whatever it's called. Hidden clockwork key, yeah. So every level, one of the levels when you complete it, the chest will drop a clockwork key, which you can use to open one of these three things. You can either get a gift, which is a bunch of health um, charges and keys. You can get a new glyph. You can only ever have one glyph active at once, though, so you have to change between them with the Y button, which brings up that, that screen I brought up for a second where he shut off his arm. Or you can pick up an upgrade, and I tend to always go for the upgrades. So we're going to have another mobility upgrade here, and we only have no money for spontaneous combustion. Set enemies on fire when shadow walking through them. If we had more, we get malicious spirit, which fires a projectile. But I'm kind of cool with spontaneous combustion, so we'll just grab that. And we'll do the three skull combat here. And I'm just going to try and... Shadow walk into things to mark them and get some mana. And then we'll just kill these little eyeballs. We're definitely gonna pick up this health because I may die very easily here. Uh, I broke his shield at least. Trying to kill him for the delicious mana. Well, now we have a slight problem because I'm out of shadow walks and I'm surrounded. So we're just gonna have to dodge really well here. Whoa, that was close. There we go, we did it. 
unfortunately we need keys, so I guess I should have, uh, should have opted for the, um, what do you call it? The, oh, I want to see what mission I did. Make 12 special kills, that's what it was. Should have opted for the, uh, the gift there instead of the upgrade, I suppose. I'm going to save my Glyph and Shadow Walk for the boss here. So that was wave one. So wave two, you see, has this skull on it. This is going to be our boss wave. There's our guardian. It seems to be different every time, and it seems to just usually be an upgraded version of, ah, shoot, of a regular enemy. So there we died. Um, right here, I can spend 100 of my 470 coins to continue that run, but I'm not going to do that. We completed one mission, so we didn't get our next unlock. And we can change over other characters. So we got four characters here. They all play very differently, which I really like. Um, Eon has the rapid fire basic attack. He has a long range, uh, but a narrow default glyph that like dagger, single dagger. Uh, his shadow walk is, I, I think initially it doesn't have the um, haunting wind upgrade to deal damage you pass through them. I think that was the first, like you have to complete one mission and then he has it. Um, we encourage you to shadow walk through enemies. Big Mo is a Technomancer, Cyborg Technomancer. He has 7 HP instead of 5. He only starts with 1 key, but he starts with 3 charges, so you can uh, use your abilities a little more using that resource, and that's because his Shadow Walk and Glyph only have 2 uses. Uh, his Shadow Walk defaults coming with bait, which I almost got on um, Eon there at the end, where he creates a decoy that attracts enemies when he uh, shadow walks. Wherever he was when you hit, you hit the shadow walk, he'll jump and there'll be a fake him that all the enemies will go towards and try and punch. And he also goes invisible while he does it, so you can attack them and they while they're attacking the fake you, which is pretty cool. Uh, his glyph is an arcane grenade, which is a targeted AoE, and his basic attack is a long range, narrow one, but it, I think it's like a screen wide laser that you just hold and he just continues firing the laser, and it's a bar appears above his head, and after the first charge, the laser gets thicker, but if it, the bar charges the second time he overheats, you can't use his basic attack for a while. Kind of cool. I, I think Big Mo is probably one of my more favorite characters to play as so far. Um, just because he has a different, a very different playstyle that I, I think I'm more comfortable with the, like, le using the glyph and the shadow walk less and just sticking to the basic attack a lot more. Um, some upgrades I've gotten for him, uh, he has, when you hit the second half of his laser, um, it makes shockwave, which is pretty cool, get the damage increase, and he's more, uh, I don't know, geared toward using the energy cells, because he does more damage with them now. Uh, play Big Mo enough, you'll unlock Yukai, who is a possessed spirit channeler. She's got these little masks that float on chains beside her, who are the spirits that are possessing her. Um, She's very fragile, she only has 3 HP by default, but she has this uh, shield, kind of like in Isaac when you have Holy Mantle, you get to take a hit per room, she has a shield that lets her negate the first hit she takes every floor, or every like card. Um, her Shadow Walk only has, is back to 4 charges, and she starts with Malicious Spirit, which shoots a homing missile to a nearby enemy, so you Shadow Walk and then a little homing missile comes out and trace, tracks somebody down. and hunts them. Um, her glyph is chain spirit, she shoots chain, she chains somebody in there, they can't move and they slowly get drained. Um, and she's very fast, faster than the other character, like she moves faster. Um, and then her basic attack is a close combat melee blade, sorry I bumped my uh, desk there, which means she has to be really close to enemies, which is kind of frustrating. She's actually very difficult to play as because you have to be close to them, she's very fragile. She's not too strong. Um, I think we end up... You, one of your first upgrades is your basic attack reflex projectiles, which is incredibly useful because then you can kill enemies by reflecting the projectiles back at them, which I think counts as a special kill. 
so then you don't have to chain and shadow walk as much. Um, I've never run into a cursed card, but apparently she auto reveals them. Um, and she leaves death clouds around when she kills people now. And then I unlocked Rasimov, and Rasimov is a very interesting character. He is a occultist blood mage, well not a blood mage, like a soul mage trying to cheat death. Uh, so far he's got sacrificial healing, which is very important. You see he starts with four health. Sometimes when you go to the shop, instead of spending mana or the Illuminati coins, you spend your health, you sacrifice health. Rasimov doesn't collect mana, he collects souls. When you kill an enemy with a special kill, then souls float out and you have to grab them quickly because otherwise they can disappear. And that fills up his soul meter, and if you fill it up all the way, you get a health drop and an upgrade card. You can go back out to the table and you can upgrade. And every time you go to the shop or you want to upgrade a skill, it doesn't cost mana because it doesn't have mana. It costs health. So you have to pay like two of your four health. Now you don't pay the containers. You just pay the health in the container. So you can heal the damage you take after. But it ends up being insanely difficult to stay alive as Rasimov because you can't afford to get all these upgrades that you're used to getting with all these other characters. Um, which is really, really interesting. Uh, his glyph is a single target like trap where it puts a little circle on the ground and when an enemy walks into it they're stuck there and they kind of block all the enemies and then eventually they explode. And his shadow walk just comes with the time walk ability by default so time slows down for a little bit after he shadow walks. It kind of like when you read it, you think, oh, like, which time in Bayonetta? No, it's just, it's like a enemies move a little slower, whereas you are, you're normal during it, so you don't really notice it, that it happened, because you move normally, but everybody else moves slower. Um, and his basic attack is, it's twofold. You can char hold it down, and you do a short-range cloud. It's kind of like a flamethrower, but with a wide cone, um, similar to Eon. Or you can not hold the trigger down, and while you're not holding it down, it charges up. And then when you do hit the trigger, it'll launch one large ball of blood across the map. Similar to Eon's Glyph, I suppose. So, that's kind of Leap of Fate. It's, you just kind of keep going through these cards. I think the farthest I've ever gotten was level 4 with Mukai or Big Mo. I forget who got there. It might have been both of them. I might have got to level 4 with both of them. I might have a total of 5 with one of them, I'm not sure. Um, every time you complete a level, you get new missions, so you, you it's not just like two missions a run. So you could theoretically, if you're really good, unlock all the uh, unlocks on one character in one run, but it's unlikely you're likely to have to do multiple runs, and things are going to be very different, the decks change. Um, where their placement is, uh, like I said, the skill trees are randomly generated, levels are randomly generated, everything... I, I, I remember Rogue Legacy had this problem, where once you got all the unlocks, you just wanted to beat the game the last time, and then you were kind of done, like... Once you had all the unlocks, there was nothing to... there was no incentive to keep playing, and I worry that Leap of Fate has that problem, where once you've gotten all four characters' unlocks, you're gonna, you're not gonna have incentive to play. There are little story bits. There's uh, five different endings you can get for each character, and they've got different um, unlock conditions. So for Eon, you have to collect mana and kill creatures with Shadow Walk, or just get to level four, which clearly Eon is not. And then everyone has a complete normal, a complete hard ending. I think the only ending I've unlocked was Mukai's. I think I unlocked one of hers. Yeah, so you have to defeat. Five bo 10 bosses, um, unlock 25 clockwork cards, which I'm very surprised that I have not unlocked that many with Big Mo. I think Big Mo is where I started to get a grasp on how the kind of flow of the game worked. Uh, killing creatures while invisible and then normal and hard. Mukai here. I forget what the unlock condition was for this, but I did it. Um, and then reflect projectiles, complete normal. Reach level 4 in hard mode, complete normal mode. And then Rasimov has his story unlocks. Enter mystery cards, sacrifice health, complete normal, you sack cards in hard mode, complete hard mode. Um, 
Not a whole lot in the way of options. You can mess with your control bindings, which is probably something I would recommend doing. I'm not a huge fan of the controller layout. Like I said, it's basic attack on right trigger. Um, Glyph on right shoulder, Shadow Walk on left shoulder, but because it's a twin stick shooter, I guess you can you don't really want to assign those to the face buttons because it's gonna be hard to hit face buttons with your thumb on the stick. So maybe left maybe the triggers and shoulders are a good idea. Maybe they put more thought into the design than I I did in my like couple hours with it here. But I'm really enjoying Leap of Fate. Um there was one bug I, I encountered where I unlocked a new glyph for Big Mo and I hit the Y button to pull up his like body with the arm to see what the new glyph was and the game just kind of hung on a black screen for a while and I just had to alt or like control out delete and quit the game but I like that there's a large variation in playstyle between the characters you got your like neutral all-rounder your like slow strong heavy guy your weak quick uh more technical character and then you're like very different completely out of the box like all the rules have changed character I like that there's a reason, there's like an incentive for replayability in the upgrades and the stories. I don't know if, how the outfits work, if you have to, maybe you have to do things to unlock the outfits as well once you've unlocked outfits period, or maybe you just get them all. I don't know, I haven't gotten that far. Um, but I kind of dig it, I'll probably play some more of it on my own off camera. Um, I think it's $16 US, 18 Canadian on Steam right now, so uh, yeah, if you're interested, check out Leap of Fate, I'll have a link to this store page in the description of the video, so thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time, bye for now.